Oh goody. This is this is a fun. Part. This is fun. Are we having fun? Having a great time. <laughs> On the wake. There's a cast I would maybe get in there and sleep right now. Uh. <laughs> what am I? I'm chopped liver. She doesn't count me. I'm not good enough support. Because we're probably both just as scared. Thank God we bought these headlamps. Well, we're not. Well, right now there's a light like, lights on. What? It's so dark. Well, we can turn on the full lights. That's true. Mm -hmm. I don't need to look at it from over here. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Nah. It's not okay. It'd be alright. Turn on, turn on your brighter light. Oh my god, that's area is F. Yeah, no. Is that that's where we have there. to, is that where we have to go? Yeah, no, we have. I'm Kayla and I'm Emily and today we're going to talk about Waverly Hills Sanatorium yep we've been we actually haven't been sitting on this one that long but like we've been so excited <laughs> to talk about it yeah because I don't I didn't think we would be able to go to this infamous place as soon as we have yeah it kind just of kind just, of all fell into place yeah it just fell into our laps and we're like well shit we should go do this and not only did we go do it, we did the, what was it, six hour overnight? Yes. So we got there at midnight and we stayed till six. Oh, yeah. Six. We stayed yeah. till six, Kayla. Don't reveal my shame. <laughs> I mean, by the time we got back to the hotel, it was six. Shh. I mean, I think it was like, yeah, we stayed pretty much the whole time. My back gave out. <laughs> yeah, her poor back. Um, <laughs> but I, yeah, so this was our first like true overnight at a location because we'd done Glore till 1 a.m., but this was our... Yeah, and this is our real time. I handled it a lot better than I thought. I, I would. handled it a lot worse than I thought I would, but there were there were factors. There were there were outlying factors. Yeah, it was your it yeah. was your back. Yeah, we had a And lot I had come from like a restful time, but you had been like at a conference and yeah. then going into this, like you didn't have time to prep like I had. But I think it's safe to say we both definitely caught the ghost hunting bug. Oh yeah, like I mm. I think I was telling Emily as we were driving there that this is going to make or break us as ghost hunters. And it's like, we've got the bug. Like I thought it <laughs> broke me at the time, but when we were done, I was like, that won't happen again. Let's schedule another one. And, yeah. we, and we did. And we did. Yeah. We have a, yeah. Another, not at Waverly, but another. At the toots. At the toots. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never going to be able to call it its actual name because it's ridiculous. The Wyeth Toodle Mansion in St. Joseph. Old Toodles. That's in a few weeks. But anyways, yeah, Waverly Hills. Um, it's a big one. And we, we did it and we survived and we got, I mean, they talk about you can't go there and not have something happen. And they were right. And it's amazing. There were some things that we, in the moment, were, we knew we were capturing, but so much is like... Yeah, we had no idea. ...was we're reviewing our footage. This one will also eventually have a video episode. Yep. So we did a lot of filming, which was really fun for us because we haven't really done that before. So... Yep, and it's definitely what we're... It's something we're going to focus on moving forward for sure because it, it helped our investigation a lot to have multiple things to go back to to kind of verify or true because a lot of the time either Emily was recording on a digital recorder and I was recording on our iPhone or vice versa or we were both recording on our iPhone so pretty much every moment was double captured so anyways <sighs> um yeah it was I remember leaving there feeling super disappointed too like I had fun but I didn't think we got anything yeah. And then the next day, once we'd, like, finally recovered and we were in our hotel room, we're like, let's just listen to this stuff. Yeah, we actually even skipped doing stuff in Louisville because we just wanted to review the footage. Yeah, we're like, <laughs> wait a second. <laughs> what did we get? Because it was, you'll, you'll see you'll later. See. But I guess first, we should probably bore people with the history. We haven't had the... I feel like we haven't had, like, a legit professor experience with you in a while. No, because we... Yeah, we haven't had an investigate. We've kind of been doing these other topics, which has been a lot of fun. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's been a little while since I've... We've done an investigation. Are you ready? 
I think so. All right. <laughs> I'm ready to be learned. Teach me good. So Waverly Hills is located in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, it first opened in 1910 as a two-story treatment facility for tuberculosis. It was originally designed to treat about 40 to 50 people. That quickly grew to the current five-story, 150,000 square foot facility that was built in 1926. I mean, it is huge. Yeah, it's, it's insanely big. And the fact that they basically just gave us free roam of it. Yeah. I still can't wrap my head around that. I mean, and we, I mean, we were there six hours and we still, we didn't really get to explore the fifth floor because we just ran out of time. Yeah. Like, that place is massive. And we didn't, like, get fully lost, but we definitely got lost on occasion. And, like, I feel like we were just starting to figure out the layout near the end of the night. But right. it's just, it's a huge place. It is. And the second, third, and fourth floors are pretty much identical because those were the patient floors. So the one side has like the open air, is it like solariums? Solariums. And then on the other side of the hall is like little rooms. So that's where... The terminal rooms. The terminal rooms. So once someone... Did I say, yeah, this was a tuberculosis facility? Okay. Yeah, I said that. Okay. <laughs> like people... Oh, and that's the thing. Like, Waverly Hills, it was a sanatorium. That does not mean it was a mental hospital. That's something I never really like. Oh, I a sanatorium either. is just like a health facility. Is so, this sanatorium with an A or an yes, I? with, with an, an A. a. So the sanatorium with the I is the mental hospital. Right. I think, obviously not now, but I think before I'd really started researching things a bunch, I'd thought that this was like a mental health facility. I did facility, too. Like I knew about the tuberculosis, but I guess I just thought because you were here sanatorium, and I always just thought that was yeah. And then like I feel like I feel like people then additionally once they get disappointed that it wasn't that they're like, well, some tuberculosis patients did go crazy if it like get what got to their like brains right. or whatever. But I think that's what I'd heard too. It's just mm -hmm. like, well, they were crazy though. Like, well. Not really. But not, yeah. Yeah. That was such a small percentage of the people that stayed there. Yeah. So that was, so the second, third, and fourth floor had your, like, permanent residence. The one side with the open air, that was for the ones that they thought would get better, and then they would move them to the other side of the hall when they thought that they were not going to make right. it. Then the fifth floor had the children's ward, which that's so sad to yeah. think about kids with TB. Yeah. And then it also included the patients with tuberculosis that went to the brain it's kind of an odd combination yeah, just, they did a lot of weird things with the kids there like yeah. i get i get it knowing the science that they as they understood it at the time like they thought the fresh air and all of that was the best treatment so in that sense putting the kids on the roof and putting a playground, playground on, on the roof, the roof open mm -hmm. air i guess was them trying to be like getting the max exposure yeah but also like <sighs> yeah um, but Waverly Hills, it actually was, especially for the time, it was a nice place. Like, they weren't poorly treated. They, at least for what they knew, yeah. um, you know, it was, at, at this time, they didn't quite know what caused tuberculosis or really how to treat it. It was just, it was a very deadly disease. So the patients had to become residents at Waverly and the staff did too so it was like a totally self-contained facility mm -hmm. which is interesting and um but the doctors it sounds like it was pretty good for its time they had access to 24 7 nutritional meals so they could eat whenever they wanted they had all the fresh air um they had these heat lamp rooms yeah right they had that and then I remember that when we were on our tour, the guide showed us, like, these almost, like, jacks in the wall. And I guess it had been where they were able to listen to music. Like, there was music yeah. going through. Because it was in sort of, like, the breezeway of the solarium area. So it was, like, outside of the rooms, they have these open breezeway areas with the large windows that would have... I believe they had glass at them at the time. No, they didn't? No, it's just copper okay, screens. we did talk about that. So they had the screens. So that's where they would sit. And they would just sit in these chairs and be able to, like, listen to music and stuff. And... 
So it think, was a good place. I think if people had a pretty happy experience, happy even though they, they had be, a yeah. d- deadly disease, but I, I think they were actually treated well. They talked about on the tour, too, the second floor had a big dining hall where they encouraged the residents, if they felt well enough, to get dressed and come down yeah, and like socialize. nice and everything. And dine, which that's cool. Yeah, like they tried to, it's, and they did say like a lot of people there felt like it was their home and not just a hospital, so it wasn't. Obviously, there were a lot of very negative things about being there, and the people weren't like, oh, super happy all the time, but it was as good as it could have been, Mm -hmm. I think. And it was never overcrowded. Mm -hmm. Um, It it sounds like it was, they never, they didn't talk about any understaffing, so I think it was run pretty great, I guess, as it could. It's definitely not like, when you see the place and when you hear about it, it's not what you picture, so I think it's definitely important to be like no it wasn't like this horrible evil place where they're mistreating people and doing these horrible experiments or anything like that like right and i guess kind of with that so um tuberculosis they did have one treatment which a lot of go shows or the other podcasts like to talk about but we learned uh, it was voluntary Mm -hmm. that's where they would open up the chest cavity and remove ribs and they had to do it like it wasn't a one and done procedure it was multiple times because you had to do like a few ribs at a time i think was Mm -hmm. kind of the gist of it yeah but didn't they need to like put something in the lung to help reinflate it once they'd yeah they would they yeah it it just sounded brutal so i guess the doctors would talk to the patients about what it was and it was it was up to them to decide if they wanted to do that treatment or not which i guess i don't fully understand is that just once the lungs are just so did whatever is happening i don't fully understand what tb does to the body enough to really speak to it but yeah it was it but yeah they made it very clear that it was very elective and you could um people knew the risks and mm-hmm. it was at the point where they probably knew they weren't going to make it either way so like you either try, try something, something or you just wait yeah yeah but yeah. even their operating room was kind of advanced because they talked about how they had like natural sunlight coming in and they would open the windows and a lot of that i don't remember what chemical they were using but it was anesthesia yeah because they had to use that because apparently it was incredibly volatile and they couldn't i don't think they could have regular overhead lights with it Mm -hmm. so they needed the sunlight and also the sunlight is helpful for other reasons but like yeah it was a very well thought out place it was yeah, and the basement there's a, there is a morgue. Oh, there sure is. But they said they only did it was a, it's a small morgue and it just has like three body trays because they only did autopsies on patients that died of causes other than tuberculosis, yeah, which wasn't many. But... Right. But you're so. tiptoeing very close to yes, probably one of the worst pieces of this place. So tuberculosis was also known as the White Plague. And, you know, it had a death rate of one death per day during, um, you know, the early 1900s. Um, So due to the high death rate, the facility they converted, wasn't it like a kind of a construction tunnel? They said they would transport like... I think so. Like supplies. So they had this, it's a 500 foot long tunnel under the building that they converted into what we now call the body chute. So they, to kind of keep morale up, they didn't want the patients to see, you know, all these deaths every day. So they would started taking the bodies through this tunnel where then a hearse would be waiting at the bottom to load the casket. Which is like absolutely terrifying sounding, but it was very thoughtful. Yeah. Like, because you don't want to see every day there's a new casket rolling down the hallway. Right. Because <laughs> that would have been awful. Like, for your morale. Like, right. And like, not only for all the adults there that might understand it a little bit better, but all the kids. Like, mm-hmm. it was definitely a very, very good thing for them to do, but it does make for a very horrific fact. Yeah. When you, when you, and when you're there, it's absolutely terrifying. Yeah, it's... we really didn't spend much time in no, the body No, we need shoot to go back. It was, to... it was pretty terrifying. and I think was... we terrified other people. <laughs> yeah, because there were some people. So I guess, well, we could talk about that later when we... But, yeah, um, we'll, we'll get there. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to jump ahead to our investigation, but... 
about 6,000 people died inside of Waverly Hills that we know of. They did say that they don't have any records hardly because they were all destroyed in flooding and such. So yeah, they had like there's really thing. not a lot of like what they get is from families saying, oh yeah, you know, such, such family member lived here and died there. But roughly yeah. they're estimating about 6,000 people probably died at Waverly when it was the tuberculosis facility. So, when the antibiotic streptomycin, streptomycin? streptomycin yeah, was discovered, tuberculosis cases then started to lower over the years. So, Waverly Hills closed in June of 1961, and the building was reopened in 1962 as Woodhaven Geriatric Center, a nursing home primarily treating aging patients with various stages of dementia and mobility limits. But this is probably where the like maybe the, the, the bad parts of Waverly come into yeah. the story because Woodhaven was greatly understaffed and overcrowded and they had reports of patient neglect. And on our tour, they even talked about how the fourth and fifth floors were not supposed to be used, but they had found dementia patients locked on the fourth floor. So it was closed by the state of Kentucky in 1982. That was open a long time. Yeah, I mean, 20 years. Like, that was enough time for people's lives to just end in that condition. Mm -hmm. Potentially just being locked and left alone in a room. Ugh. When you already have dementia. It's so awful. So, yeah, any of the dark energy that is at Waverly, we think, would have been from its time as the nursing home. Yeah, because that, like... I mean, the, those people weren't evil, obviously, by any means, but they were mistreated in a very difficult and confusing time. I can only imagine what that would have mm -hmm. potentially produced. Yeah. Ugh. I'm I getting, know. like, chills thinking about <laughs> it, knowing kind of what we experienced there. It's just, like... And they don't talk... Like, you, people always kind of brush over the history of its time as a nursing home, and you're just focused on the tuberculosis part, which is what it was designed for, so I get it. But it's, like, it was a nursing home for 20 years, and it sounds like... That's a lot of dark, bad times happened. Yeah, because, like, that was actual malice versus the sanatorium days. Like, yeah, it was bad and bad. There was a lot of happened, death. But everybody was trying their best to help people. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah, that, that, I hate that part of it so much. Um, but then, so, the building was then sold in 2001 to Tina and Charlie Mattingly, and it took them two years to clean out all the trash and debris. So I think the building was pretty much abandoned for like 20 years. And so, of course, it was a haven for trespassers and homeless. And so when they bought it in 2001, they were really, it took them a long time to just get it to the state it is today. It sounds like a really good state. It really is. Yeah. I It's it's clean. It is. Like, it's clean. It feels relatively safe. And they have, like, I remember... Mm. They encourage people to go to, like, the roof, but they had tiles that were safe to walk on and tiles that weren't. Like, mm -hmm. as far as places that we've investigated go, and we haven't gone that many places, but as far as they go, this felt like a really well-preserved one. Yeah, much better than our favorite winery. <laughs> That's a topic for another day. <laughs> I am losing favoritism of it a little bit, and I don't think it's... You know. <laughs> you know. Um, do you want to talk about some of the stories at Waverly? Yes. So, going back to when it was like a sanatorium, there are some stories attributed to ghosts, um, which we didn't end up investigating again. It was on the... I know. I almost said the fifth hundred floor. <laughs> the fifth hundred. <laughs> the fifth floor. That's how far away it was. In room 502. It was so far away we couldn't make it. So in room 502, there is a story of a nurse that hung herself. Was it in the room or outside? There it was, was outside. Different. There's yeah. kind of a lot of different, yeah. Because some people said in the room, and then some people said that she was found hanging from the light fixture outside of it, which I was literally, like, standing under it when she pointed, <laughs> and I was like, oh, hello. Yeah, because it, well. Oh. Well, I mean, the story is, like, again, it's just, like, a story. It's nothing that's really verifiable at this point, but the room were the rumors were that she'd either had an affair with one of the doctors who was married and potentially fell pregnant from that and killed herself, or 
same similar story and had a botched abortion and then the doctor hung her up to make it look like she'd killed herself Mm -hmm. it's one of those things i feel like so many places have stories like this like even my college had a story about a nursing student who hung herself in the observatory on our campus because of a similar situation that's just such a common story for some reason yeah and it's it's tough because one waverly has no records hardly but it's like you think this would be a story that would have made the news but then also if it was true they probably would have covered it up so it's like who knows our guide had even brought up like she had heard of a story from a newspaper in like waverly like a city in a different state of this happening Mm -hmm. yeah it was like waverly new york yeah yeah it was like one of those things where like that's right did this just get distorted over time and become a Waverly story? I mean, mm. some people do say that they've seen a, a, a nurse's spirit on that floor, though, but it's not The nurse's station was also up there. Yeah. I remember, so, it was like, in between the There's a lot of nurses mm-hmm. there, and I'm sure some of them got TB and died as well, so, I mean, I don't know. But yeah. that's, that is one of the big stories there. There is... Was it the fourth floor that the operation, yes. the operating room was on? Mm-hmm. So we were talking, I know, earlier about the one procedure where they would take out, like, pieces of rib and everything. And I remember that our tour guide was saying that people would lay down on the operating table, which it was an accurate, like, authentic operating table, and some people would lay on it, and they would say that they could feel what was, like, tapping on their rib cage. Mm-hmm. Like, somebody was, like, feeling where they would need to be removing some ribs or anything like that. And, oh, another thing that made me panic and leave that room when we were investigating, the door slams, and once it slams and closes, it locks, and you're locked in the observation or the operation room. Until someone can let you out. Yeah, and I remembered that while we were in there, and I was like, Kayla, I'm going! <laughs> the door closes, Kayla! Kayla! <laughs> Kayla! That was true. At one point, we were just kind of roaming, and we were both in there, and yeah, Emily was like, I'm leaving! We can get locked in here! <laughs> That's like one of my biggest fears, is just getting locked somewhere and nobody knowing I'm there. Like, that please! Would, that would be too- Yeah, that was like towards the end of the night. It was right before we left, so it was like, you know, 5.30 in the morning, but... Um, oh, and that's another thing about the operating room. It has one of the few uh, original items of the time it was the tuberculosis facility because it still has the light. Yeah. Because they said it, pretty much everything was cleared out, so they don't have very much original stuff in there. Yeah, this. But the operating light is big, original. empty freaking building. Yeah. Um, so those are those two ones. I think one of the most famous stories, Mm -hmm. um, which I can see why now in retrospect, but one of the most famous stories at Waverly involves a homeless man that one of the former owners had allowed to stay um, at Waverly to kind of help guard it. Um, It was a homeless man and his dog, and they slept. We saw it on the tour. Was it on the third Third. floor? Mm -hmm. There's like a little... So there's the elevator shaft, and then there's a little alcove that goes kind of almost, like, behind, behind it. Like, it, it's a hallway, a very narrow hallway, and then it snakes around, and that's where he slept. And the story of him is that he was kind of chasing some intruders at Waverly, and somehow, whether it was by accident or he'd been pushed, he ended up at the bottom of the elevator shaft with his dog, and they were both dead. And that's... The story he'd either been pushed or our it's tour guide even threw, threw out that it looked like it was a ritualistic killing, which I'd heard nowhere else, but yeah, that was mentioned. Um, so the, yeah, that's that story. Nobody really knows a lot of details about him. Mm-hmm. Um, and is that the floor Timmy's on too? Because yes. that's where Timmy's, that's where the Shane and Ryan, where Ryan's yes, name. name. Yeah. So... You probably already know we're BuzzFeed Unsolved Nerds by yeah. this point. They're, the episode where they go to Waverly Hills, they spend a lot of time trying to interact with the ghost Timmy, who is also on the third floor. And Timmy's rumored to be one of the child children spirits, child spirits, young, young, they think, young because, ghouls. Yes, young ghouls. A young ghoul. That needs to be a book series. <laughs> um, so he he's one of the many like ghosts of kids because there were a lot there and there are a lot of rumors of there being very playful and just mischievous ghosts there that are suspected to be the children and Timmy is one of those who people believe will 
interact with balls that you leave in that hallway if you leave them set up and inviting to play and all that. And in their episode, when Shane and Ryan went there, um, they did the experiment with the ball and the ball rolled away and literally rolled kind of into that hallway alcove I was talking about and stopped under graffiti that said Ryan. I mean, so. <laughs> pretty crazy. <laughs> right. And honestly, like in red now with everything we have, I'm like, I don't doubt anything in that hallway mm-hmm. anymore. Yeah. Um, they pretty much said that every floor is haunted, but I, but then our guide did say the third and fourth floors seem to be the most active. The fourth floor just legitimately scared me because that's really where she didn't. said the shadow people were like mm-hmm. the most shadowy. <laughs> and she just described it so disturbingly that I was like, like, oof. Like, I think like there's, they talk about like the creeper on the fourth floor, like the shadows being like on the ceiling or. Which, um, that concept scared me a lot at the time but once we were exploring more um the building itself is so like water stained and there's so many patches of like the ceiling that's kind of decayed that there are naturally dark spots everywhere in that building that you can Mm -hmm. see even in the dark and there's so many doorways and windows that there's just different levels of darkness no matter where you look so to me the shadow people, because that's a big thing at Waverly, is the shadow yeah. people. And they have, like, the creeper you said that is crawling on the ceilings, which could easily be those dark spots we saw, mm-hmm. or crawling on the floor. Our guide even talked about a dark mass of shadow coming at them, which, like, yeah, that is scary, but also the shadows are just, they're, they're very thick there. They are. Okay, so we can go back to shadow people a little bit later, because I have some other things I want to kind of go over with those, but it's not really specifically relevant to Waverly. So there are reports of other types of spiritual activity in Waverly. Like, there's, like, a little bit of everything there. There's footsteps, which are a really big thing, and Mm -hmm. I can see why. Um, There's reports of people getting scratched, which I didn't get a scratch, but I had, like, literally my left wrist and hand the first hour we were there swelled up really bad like so bad and it was super red too yeah like my hand was it was just my left hand it was really really red and weird like it it was it like sometimes my hands will swell a little bit but that was to like a different point where it's like we might have to leave if it doesn't get better Mm -hmm. and it did get better but it was just very peculiar very random and a very like woo woo comment i have on this like i wear on my left hand a ring that's I think it's like obsidian or something. I got it at some store and I went with my friend who's into Wicca and she told me, because I was asking her, because I, I I don't necessarily know how much I believe it, but I find it interesting. And I was like, hey, can you help me find a ring that'd be good to like wear on ghost hunts to help mm-hmm. protect me from things? And she picked that one and I wore it on my, my left hand and I had to take it off because my hand was so freaking swollen. Yeah. So I didn't wear it the whole night. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, like it's still in my pocket. So I'm in on your person but that was my equivalent to being scratched or getting that weird ass bite <laughs> yeah, my, my hand <laughs> swelling up that time um one of the interesting things that people talk about having experienced at waverly is a mimic like a, a spirit mm-hmm. that'll does it physically copy people or is it just their voice that it can copy both so what's interesting about that is there's folklore about like if you see a spirit that looks like you it means you're like like destined to die mm-hmm. so like she's like that's really creepy i guess for the doppelganger like yeah story that's what it is from. the doppelganger so it's just like hmm don't like good that thing we much. didn't see either of ourselves yeah so then obviously the creeper and the shadow people the spirits at waverly are said to be very intelligent which mm, we'll i believe get to <laughs> um if you go down to like the morgue especially people here report have reported hearing humming and even like a spirit completing a song if you start humming it it'll Mm. finish it for you accurately we we try doing that we were what was it yankee doodle dandy dandy. (laughs) the whole way through (laughs) we're just like should we sing again why yes we should (laughs) we probably because we were investigating we got these headlamps and we had it switched to the red setting so we're just walking with these red lights on our hand singing yankee or on our head singing yankee doodle dandy people probably thought we were demons (laughs) (laughs) it must have been terrifying yeah especially the people at the end of the body shoot yeah we might as well talk about that now yeah I was so, so scared to go to the body shoot. 
I think we even posted a video where I, where the audio is played um, on Instagram. I didn't want to go down the hall. And I was like, can't we just look at it from down here? <laughs> and Kayla was like, no, no, come on, Emily. It'll be fine. So we go down there with our red headlamps on. <laughs> and we're just walking down. And we realize that there's people down at the bottom of the body. Well, we shoot. assume, we hope, because we could hear voices. <laughs> yeah, but they, like, looked up, and you could tell they flashed their light at us, and we're just there with our red lamps in the dark, <laughs> not realizing how scary we look. <laughs> and then Kayla's like, hello. <laughs> and then they flashed away, and they turned the spirit box on immediately after. They did. They were like, well, let's communicate with these demons at the top of the tunnel. Because we saw ourselves in, like, the windows, and it did look like two red eyes. So, and then Kayla almost fell down the stairs. I got, yeah, I don't know. I think I, I do think I just tripped at the, in the body shoot, but it, uh, I, I, I definitely fell. <laughs> so I don't know. You could say maybe I got pushed, but. Yeah. So, I mean, Waverly, like for a place that has literally, let's just blanket statement, say it has every paranormal phenomenon basically mm -hmm. you can talk about. I don't think there's really any entity that's really malicious. There is, um, on room five, in room 502, with the story related to the nurse, there is, um, like, people do get really sick in there sometimes. Like, they have a very visceral, like, physical, emotional reaction almost. But not everybody. It's just some people get, walk in there and get hit really hard by something. Mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, other than that, there's not really anything malevolent there. No. Like, even the shadow creatures, if they are there, aren't malevolent. They're just scary. Right. Just because shadows are scary. Do you want to kind of talk about what shad what the theories are or what a shadow person is? Because then maybe that will help enlighten yeah. some of you that might not know much about shadow <laughs> enlighten, people. Enlighten. Enlighten us <laughs> on shadow people. Uh-huh. I'm so funny. So, obviously, there isn't, like, any set explanation for what shadow people might be. Um, they kind of fall into three potential categories they can either be ghosts they can be demons or they can be interdimensional travelers that's my favorite sort. <laughs> yes and obviously mine's demons <laughs> um so if they're a ghost some people speculate that um maybe it's just the light spectrum we're seeing them on and that's why they appear shadows some people speculate that um when the spirit that the spirit hasn't like fully realized that it's dead or anything yet so it's kind of lost and it's just a that's, mass yeah that's why it has it's just not distinctive at all because it's not fully there um and that's why it hasn't it's just not enlightened yet so it's a dark <laughs> dark figure um the demons thing demons are demons that's just kind of it's an ominous dark shadow it's that's what it is mm -hmm. and those types of shadow people are usually accompanied with feelings of um unease and sickness and um apparently if you see them you just feel like you didn't see anything that was ever human before whatever that feels like yeah <laughs> um and then the interdimensional traveler could either be a time tra traveler an alien or somebody in an alternate dimension yeah that's just happening to just peek through a little bit so, I don't know how I feel about all that. I do have... I know, it's kind of funny that that almost seems, like, less likely than demons. <laughs> I don't know right? what that says about me. <laughs> See, I don't know, though. Like, I feel like... I feel like the different dimensions could be explained eventually. But that yes. could also then explain demons, I think. Well, or even ghosts. I mean, who's to say they're not just on a... They're just in another plane, and that's why they can sometimes peek through and, you know, da 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 the veil, all that. On shadow people, I like that I'm, like, wanting to debunk all the shadow people at Waverly when I've literally, like, had a shadow person experience. And I'm still just, like, water stains on the ceiling. There's but no I shadow people. it's good to be a skeptical believer in ghosts because it's not always... Right. That's kind of like the show, like, Ghost Hunters Taps. Like, that's kind of what they do is, like, they, they like, like to make sure that it's not... They like to debunk or check that it's not water stains or it's right. pipes or, you know, it's because it's not always ghosts. <laughs> yeah, because another thing, and this kind of ties into my story, which I'll share in a little bit, um, shadow people are often attributed to sleep paralysis because, mm -hmm. and I think we've talked about this on the show before, there is a common, like, shared nightmare or I guess even hallucination with 
sleep paralysis will people where people will see like an actual shadow figure in their room mm -hmm. because they're awake but not fully awake and the, the reason the way you can kind of determine if you're having sleep paralysis and experiencing that is you can't get up you can't right. move um and i think that's usually called like the sleep paralysis demon basically mm -hmm. it's like they just see it which is terrifying that that is a common thing and we're just yeah. like that's just brains are funny i'm like what I'm like, really? it? I'm like is that the sandman is that a demon <laughs> what's happening yeah <laughs> um so my story is i was i wasn't falling asleep i was in bed like at the point where you're getting ready for bed but you're not quite sleepy yet and the lights were off and I think like a hallway white light, hallway white. Hallway. I think what what it was was the bathroom light, which I could see from the hallway was on, but only you know like when the door is closed and you see the light around the edges, like the frame like of the in door. The poltergeist. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like I think I saw that, so there was enough illumination in the hallway that I could look and see that there was a whole ass man standing in the doorway, that like a hella big freaky. one, <laughs> and it was so bad that I, it was really quick, but it was just like look over bad enough that I got up and had to check the entire house to make sure nobody was mm. there with all my dogs, all three of them. Yeah. And nobody was there. I think that's more legit because you weren't, you weren't even a, like sleepy yet. You were just in bed. Yeah. Like, and I got up and we're, we're going to do this. It's not like you were falling asleep mm -hmm. or. And it was just like a split second of just seeing a full figure just mm -hmm. literally like filling the doorway. Yeah. But. And I'm still just like, oh, it could have been something else, though. But that goes back to it wasn't, like, the sleep paralysis thing, because I got up, and I walked, and I have a witness to be like, what the hell were you doing? You were just walking around the house, you weirdo. Yeah. <laughs> but, hmm. so I don't know. I think there is something to shadow people. I think you have to be careful in places like Waverly, where they're literally, like, made Our of dark shadows. dark spots everywhere. Yeah. And like you were saying, yeah, there's so many windows and doors, and... And when we went, they'd had some uh, Easter event earlier, so there are balloons everywhere. And At least they were only on the second floor. Oh, okay. But they were everywhere. So we kept thinking, is that, oh, that's just a freaking yeah. balloon again. There was one part where we were standing during the first tour we took before we were kind of set loose. And there was a balloon that kept, like, poking its little balloon head into this window we were standing by. And we're like, is that a balloon? Yeah, that's a balloon. I'm like, but is it a balloon? <laughs> I don't think it's a balloon. Cause it's, it's not a balloon. It's a person. Someone, like, yeah. I know. I was just like, uh? 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 <laughs> but it was a balloon. Balloon verified. Um, but yeah, it's just like anything can be really a, like a creepy looking shadow in the moment. Yeah. But, well, and your eyes can play tricks on you too when you're trying to adjust. Well, that's why I guess uh, why we had the red light on is so red kind of keeps your eyes in night vision. Yeah. It doesn't, where like, you know, a white light, your eyes are going to adjust. It, it takes longer to then adjust back if you turn that white light off. Yeah, but red doesn't do that. We didn't actually use like a regular flashlight the entire time. The only time we were like back in light was when we'd go back to home base for me to cry because my back hurt. <laughs> Take a break. <laughs> go bathroom. <laughs> Infinite needs to go to the bathroom because I drink so much water. Um, but yeah, those, those are kind of the main... The main stories, the mm -hmm. there really are only like three actual characters, I guess you could say there, and that's the yeah. nurse, the homeless man, and Timmy, Timmy. which is interesting because a lot of places have like more specific lore yeah. when they're this big, right? But I think this place just delivers. <laughs> it does, and I don't know if this is relevant or not, but. So our tour guide said to not call out directly to Timmy because they kind of don't know where that came from. It just like, I don't know, some median was there or some group thought they heard Timmy and, and so then the, the legend of Timmy was born. So we didn't call out specifically to Timmy. We took her advice. So that's just, but everyone always does on all the big ghost hunting shows. They're always reaching out to Timmy, but we did not. It's just a preface. We did not. But uh, anyways. We did, um, we did have somebody introduce themselves, though. Oh, we did. Um, yeah, so I guess we're now to the investigation portion of the episode. Yeah. Where do we want to start? Do we want to, like, go chronological with the events that happened? I say we should go, yeah, because we, yeah, chronological would be best because it's, we didn't really have much of a set pattern. Like, if we went floor by floor, we kind of just roamed. We did roam. I And I guess to preface, so there was... 
60 there's about 60 people on this tour with us yeah. um i i am very naive thinking wow there's this many people that want a ghost hunt <laughs> i'm not unique it was a very good group, but they were though. very good very yeah. respectful every no one was loud or obnoxious like when we would when we or other people would run into us it was like oh sorry and like everyone was being very respectful um and you would kind of move past if you saw someone was investigating an area or you'd turn around and go to a different floor yeah i don't know if you want more to add well so the the investigation was set up it started at midnight they locked us in um <laughs> like literally <laughs> yeah like they you locked us in there's alarms there's security essentially um and they told us at the beginning that they would let us out at two, four, four and, and six, six when it ended. Um, and we got the bulk of our actual um, evidence. Evidence. I can't. I can't think of that word today. We got the bulk of our ac- actual evidence between like four and five, mm-hmm. and a lot of people had left by then. Yeah, I mean, most people left by four. There was probably only about 20 people left. And this building is massive. I mean, it's 150,000 square feet. So we honestly didn't run into very many people. Yeah. Because it's just so massive. Yeah. And, and, quite, and a few people left at 2 a.m. And then, yeah, mass exodus. Mass, mass exodus. But four. Yeah, by the point we were getting stuff, we almost had floors to ourselves. Because that's what people were doing. The, the people that were left were people that actually brought equipment and were doing actual, like, experiments. And if mm-hmm. somebody saw somebody doing something, they actively left to respectfully, like, give them their space to actually conduct an experiment. So it makes a lot of what we found very compelling to us. <laughs> or you might kind of join up with the group. We did that a little we bit. Did, if yeah. we saw, like, people doing an EVP session, we'd kind of, like, Yeah, quietly join, just hang back. Hang, hang back or... Yeah. We were on the third floor. We were so. on the third floor, and it was 1.58 a.m. Mm-hmm. So. And previously, during our the tour of the facility, the tour guide, she had talked about how lately they've been getting a lot of healed footsteps, where they assume it's probably the nurses. And, <laughs> so, like we've said, we're in a big group. We'd gotten really familiar with what it sounded like when somebody else was approaching us. And in fact, there were a lot of times that you didn't hear a person's footsteps. You were just suddenly like, bam, somebody's there (laughs) with a flashlight. You're like, holy shit, where'd you come from? (laughs) We had that happen more than a few times. And then if there was like a group approaching that was loud enough that you could hear their footsteps, you usually heard them talking too. And we would call that out. We would say every time you might, uh, you would, yeah, we'd be like, oh, there's people coming. Oh, that's human. I kept saying that's human <laughs> footsteps. That's human voices. I, know, I was joking that if there were ghosts there, she was pissing them off because she wasn't letting them be humans. They're no longer humans just because they're dead. That was like my, I like, I said that. Are all those night. human footsteps? <laughs> so many times. <laughs> So, yeah, we called out if we heard stuff to kind of, you know, make sure we weren't, you know, if it was contamination. Yeah. So, I guess we can play it now. Um, it starts with a big clattering, clanging sound. <laughs> we don't actually know what it is. No, <laughs> we heard it, and we assumed it was probably a person running into something. I like that we were just like, that's nothing. <laughs> but it could have been a ghost thing, <laughs> for all we know. Yep, so just listen to what happens immediately after. You'll hear us comment on it. Mm-hmm. Insert sound here. Boop. <laughs> I'm going to be turning on my digital recorder. What's the beep? Well, that sounds like someone's misbehaving upstairs, but if you're down here on the third floor with us and you want to play with those balls I just put down, they're really cool. They light up when you touch them. Very determined footsteps. Yeah, some just on the line gets all over sometimes. It also kind of sound like our feet though. Like those didn't sound just like our footsteps. Just walking. Oh my god, yes. I just got fucking shivers. 
So what I found super interesting, I forgot I said it at the time that I commented that it sounded like a heartbeat. Because that was something one of our tour guides had mentioned. And it's still, when we listen back to it, it still sounds like more like a heartbeat to me than anything. Which is creepy. Yeah. To me, it, it, it sounds more like footsteps. But, I mean, just we're just having too. different experiences. But it's also weird when we amplified it in our headphones. Like, you, we could hear the footsteps a lot longer than we initially thought we could hear them. Yeah. we heard. I heard them before we even mentioned it. Like, hearing it in person. Because heard it in person and it was scary and like it sent shivers Mm -hmm. like we actually ended up then not going i think we left that floor yeah (laughs) i i almost like i felt like i wanted to run away but another interesting thing when we heard it like in person it sounded like it was coming at us from down the hall but listening to the recording, it sounds more to me like it's above us, mm-hmm. which is weird. And you can hear there's like voices down at the end of the hall. So like there, to be fair, there were people around us, but those were like footsteps that most people were just kind of walking like, you know, normal, slow pace. Everyone was wearing like hiking boots or tennis shoes. Like, I don't know. Those footsteps were very distinct. And also, they were coming towards us. Yes. Which is not the first time that has happened. Well, it was the first time it happened there. (laughs) But it wasn't the only time. (laughs) Nope. And that was the really scary part, is they were coming at us, and we saw no one. And we saw no Yeah, because it's like, we could hear that there was people at the end of the hall, and we could kind of see their lights, but they were, like, moving farther away from us. And, like, I legit expected to see just a spirit just fully form walking towards us it's also where they just stop Mm -hmm. like yeah yeah uh yeah super um super interesting it's okay (laughs) it's okay (laughs) i don't know so i guess we're maybe moving on into the other experiences so this one we we heard these in person i don't know if that's better or worse i think it's better (laughs) I think it's better than what happened next because the next one literally brings tears to my every time we play it like I it's like that intense when you get chills so bad that it's like you're gonna cry yeah yeah we um this is just weird as hell so because I recorded this one on my iPhone right that's where I caught it mainly yeah so I guess we could set up the scene so this is now Four after four a.m. Yes, and we were going down to the body shoot. Mm-hmm. So we're going down from the second floor down to the first floor, and I. So Emily's recording voice memo on her iPhone, and I. You'll hear me in her recording. I was, so we're going down the stairs and I was getting ready to video, but I realized my flash was on. So I stop on the stairs, Emily's behind me, and I'm messing with my phone to turn the flash off. And then I start video recording. And something happens in that window before I start recording, which I think is very interesting. All right, back at it, it's 4.11. Yep, we are heading down. I wonder how many people are left. chills listening to that because uh. yeah like literally maybe we need to set the scene a little bit better um so the stairs there are terrifying uh we have pictures of it we could share a picture we have videos we have the video that kayla half did yes that literally just cut around the majority of those footsteps but the stairs are very they're like short lengthwise like literally i feel like my whole foot kind of took up the step Mm-hmm. They're old. They look. They're very, marble, so they're kind of slippery, little crumbly, a little crumbly, a little slippery, and the railing's really short because. The, and I didn't want to touch. I did touch it, but everything you're kind of like. But do I 
touch it. Yeah. Um, so saying all that to say that everybody was walking on them very carefully. And mm-hmm. I remember thinking every time I went down them to be careful because I was really kind of a, a little bit afraid of tripping and falling down them. Yes. And also by this point, Emily's back is killing her. <laughs> Not just right on the bus, but... And my... I had terrible knees. Like, when I go down the stairs, like, I ain't running down the stairs because my knees are hurt. Where's the little brandy <laughs> ghostbusters? Um, and also, by this point, it's like 4.15 in the morning. We're tired. Nobody's running. And this... Well, you hear us say in the clip, how many people do you think's left? About, uh-huh. Probably about 20. Like, we hadn't no, seen anybody in a long time. We hadn't seen anyone in a while. And so, I'm pretty confident we were alone in that stairwell. And that was another thing that, to me, when I hear that, It sounds like somebody was waiting, like, down, kind of towards where we were going, and they darted up past us and Mm -hmm. up the stairs, is what it sounded like to me. And envisioning that we were just going down the stairs, and that something we couldn't see ran past us. And we did not hear these at the time, either. Like, they're pretty loud running footsteps. Like, I I am confident we would have called out, oh, there's someone running above us, or... And I just, it's super coincidental timing that I was not filming yet. It's almost like the person, the ghost, was like, oh, uh, uh, she's not filming. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sneak past him real quick. Right. Which is just like, uh... And you also, like, to know, you might be like, well, maybe those are just, because you don't hear our footsteps. It's because I stopped on the stairs, like, mid-stairs to fix my phone and then you kind of hear our, after the running, you hear our clump, clump, right. clump. Like, it literally up. sounds like we're, like, a pack of mules. <laughs> As you can tell how tired we are, we're just like, thump, thump, Yeah, thump. and I'm, you'll notice that with me, I have a little charm on my backpack. So I jingle. We, like, joke that I'm, like, a cat with a bell on its collar. Because, like, whenever I move, you ding, ding, ding. So... I'm very distinctive, and, like, you can just tell when we're walking versus, you know, when somebody's just sprinting on the stairs. And I also think it sounds like smaller footsteps. I really feel like it was, like, a child. Yeah. Um, and it also, um, we, I counted, and there's about 12 steps. So it's, like, 12 steps, a landing, 12 steps. The footsteps, like, if you count them, it's closer to, like, 20. So, yeah, I think that just the, the thing ran pretty much the full length of the the floor, the staircase. I love that you counted the stairs, by the way. <laughs> they were like, I need to know. How well, many steps do I take? I know, I was like, I was like, I also tested myself at work, like, <laughs> how, like, how fast would I have to run down the stairs if it was me? And it was, it was like, those are faster than I can run downstairs. I am not in shape. Specifically, <laughs> specifically those stairs. And yeah, we would have commented if we heard somebody running, we'd be like, what the fuck are they running from? Like, exactly. Why are they running? <laughs> Should we be scared? So. so more. But wait, there's more. There is more. This one scares me a lot. I didn't actually, I didn't actually hear this. I, this I was. This is a credit to your. I was so excited about this audio that I, because it was on my phone. So I just sent it to a bunch of people and my mom. Shout out to mom. She's, like, one of our biggest fans. I think she listens as soon as the episode drops. I know. It's so awesome. But she got this audio, and she was, like, she didn't really focus on the footsteps. She was, like, the person saying hello. I'm, like, what person saying hello? And we kind of heard it on my phone listening back. But when we listened to it just now with the headphones in, we were, like, holy fuck. (laughs) This is a clear hello. Uh, And it's, like, very well timed with when we were talking. Yeah, because you'll hear me say, we're coming up on the morgue. Mm, yeah, the morgue. Yeah, so this also happens in front of the morgue. Yeah, which for a f- was empty. It was very empty. Yeah, and you can very faintly hear, because I am recording on my iPhone video by this point, you can faintly hear it as well on my iPhone, but it's much clearer on Emily's iPhone. Which is an interesting observation. We were never very far apart No, in this investigation and there are multiple instances where we would hear something on one device whether it's we both had our iPhones and we're doing something different with our iPhones or one of us had a digital recorder and one of us had an iPhone going 
we would hear usually the same thing on both devices, but it would clearly sound like one thing was closer to another person, which makes it worse. Yeah. Because, um... <laughs> so I think this hello was being said to you. Yeah, this one in particular was, like, right up in my business, and in yours it sounded like it was further away. And I think you were up closer. Well, I was in front. Yeah, because I was like, you were oh, like, <laughs> you were so like, scared. <laughs> she was like, I don't want to go, I don't want to go. And I'm like, it's fine, let's go. I was like, okay. Let's so go. I was, I we probably were a little farther apart because I was like leading the way, but I, we were still within several feet of each other. But So we can play that. Yeah, so we'll play, and... it's after I say morgue. <laughs> decided that my mom's hired as our researcher mm -hmm. we don't pay <laughs> in fact i think you have to pay to participate at this it's, point it's very expensive <laughs> I, I joked with emily like we should do a reel about how much money we've spent and she was like no that's just gonna depress me <laughs> yeah please don't don't i want to continue doing this i don't need reasons not to present it <laughs> we are very much in the hole but we're having fun yeah. um and getting legit things like i don't know that hello is um, i feel like... and it was kind of like hey i'm coming up on the morgue and it was like hey <laughs> so this might this is a bit of a spoiler because we do get some other voices mm -hmm. they're all a man's voice yes they all sound to me the same yeah so do you think somebody was just following yes. us that night yeah i do i really do <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean yeah Unless... Maybe it was like, was it running down the stairs to like lead the <laughs> way? Guys, I'm coming! I'm coming! <laughs> or, or you think it was running up the stairs, but regardless, <laughs> I don't know. But like, so either we had the same spirit following us, or there was like a jackass person creeping around after us trying to scare us, which I find unlikely because we did point out at one point because there was one audio we heard of somebody talking. And it was a man again, and it didn't sound the same. But we kind of noticed that there's a different kind of echo. When it's human voices? <laughs> when it's human voices. And then when it's something that we believe to be, like, a spirit, an EVP, like, there's a muffling and a distortion that's just a little bit different. Obviously, we, we, we don't have the ability to analyze audio to the point of being able to say something really smart sounding. But that's kind of our... Um, they almost sound the, these. Well, which in an EVP, if you don't, know, it's an electronic voice phenomenon. They, they, yeah, they almost sound like they're, they're, I don't know, kind of distorted or coming through. Which, if you think about them needing to use very like, electronic mm -hmm. sounding, which you know a lot of. But, 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 but. This is why we need to record because half of what I'm doing right now is just facial expressions. Um, <laughs> paranormal, of, like thank you, researchers and they. Obviously, they tie, like, electronics and spirits being able to manipulate electricity and electronics to communicate. If that is the case, then the fact that the way our equipment and just our phones, which isn't really equipment, but we're basically using it like that in our investigations, they come through them differently. Mm -hmm. And sometimes solely just through that item and for them to sound distorted in the audio... And we've had our iPhones in particular glitch multiple times on investigations. Yes. To the point where it's just like, that was an abnormal glitch, particularly at the Sally house. We won't talk about that in detail, but that's the one I'm thinking of as far yeah. as like... Yeah, we haven't... Yeah, that's got to be something we talk about someday because we did a return to the Sally house and we've just not talked about it, but we... Yeah, I haven't let us talk about it. I know, I think, yeah, Emily, uh, does, she's still got to work on getting brave to talk about our return to the Sally House. But maybe I'm just smart. <laughs> maybe. I'm the dummy no to do. But anyways, um, yeah, the iPhone did our super weird glitch thing. Um, but yeah. Um, should we continue our journey? So we should continue our journey. So then from here, yeah, we went to the body shoot. We scared those I, people. I tripped she or tripped, was pushed. She pushed by a friend. And then we go... because you said they weren't human. Probably. <laughs> you bitch. <laughs> I, it was... We should post the video of me tripping. Oh, I will. am I am really confused because Emily's like, what'd you do? <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I asked if you were okay first. 
And then I started laughing and, and blamed you for falling. And I'm like, so you can tell my voice, I'm super confused. Yeah, I'm you're like, like I, don't I don't know. know. I think, I guess I tripped. You're like, I guess I missed a step. <laughs> but, uh, so then from there, we went, we started making our way. I think we hadn't been to the fourth floor much. I think we were working our way up to the fourth floor, but we got stopped in on the third floor. We ran into a gentleman. Yes. I don't know. He was like, I just had some kick this ball. And then, yeah, he did. Yeah, he was so excited. Like, it was, it was adorable. Yeah, he was so excited. He just said he had like rolled the ball and it, then it like went hard down the hall like someone kicked it. I don't think this guy was real though. I know because he literally, <laughs> then he was like, he was like, I'm going to go get my ball. And he walked he down gone. the hall and we never saw him again. Like literally never saw him again the rest of the night. <laughs> he looked like. He looked like anybody's dad. Yeah. I think he had the mustache even, didn't uh -huh, he? I think so. Well, I mean, we can see in the video. Yeah. Um, he just appeared to tell us he was doing this, and then he just bravely marched into the darkness. Did, yeah. Never even, to return. I don't even think he had a flashlight. He, he did. did. He had a flashlight. Oh, did he? Because <laughs> I remember watching the video, because I commented, I was like, I wish I was that brave. Because he was just alone. He just goes off until his light just was swallowed up. By the darkness. <laughs> and we never and we never saw him the rest of the night either. Like so we're like, was he real? No. Did we see a full body apparition? <laughs> I was pretending to be a ghost hunter. He's like, I love joining these things. I just had this ball kicked. But then he, that kind of inspired us. We're like, okay, well, he just had this ball kick. So we're like, well, let's just do a little. We brought so many balls with us. Yeah. So we have those little cat balls that light up. And we're also outside the elevator shaft where yeah. the homeless man and his dog lived. So we're right outside that. Yep. And I put a couple balls down. And you can... I will say you can kind of hear, I think there was people, they were on the floor above or the floor below kind of talking in the stairwell because we're pretty close to the stairwell. Yeah, I remember so, being nervous about people coming down and tripping on things. Yes. But they went away because that's when we started getting more comfortable. So yeah, you might initially, I don't, um, kind of hear some people talking and then they move on and then we were very much alone. No, or so we, we thought. Not. So how did this start? This started with us saying... We, we invited somebody to come speak with us. Yes. And now we're going to play what happened. We heard you just kicked a ball. Do you want to kick these little balls that light up that we brought? See how far they can go down the hallway? But they can go pretty far. Is there someone here that wants to talk to us? Okay, so we weren't um, supposed to be recording right now. We were actually editing. We had uh, something recorded already, but when we were listening through to the EVPs again, we realized that we missed a couple things. So we're re-recording the um, commentary for this section to account for that. So you guys just heard shuffling, right? That's yep. all you heard, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we might sound a little rough, too. We're both extremely tired, and it's very late on Sunday night. Yeah. So if This we... was supposed to just be an editing night, but we're like, okay, we have to re-record yeah, this section of, because we, we heard we heard more than we thought we did yeah. as we're amplifying the clips. Um, so we'll first talk about the shuffling, even though there's actually something that happens before the shuffling. So obviously, it's I kind of, I say, 
is anyone here that wants to speak with us? And then you start to hear this shuffling footsteps coming towards us. And mm-hmm. we we were alone on the floor by this point. That The guy that we had ran into earlier a couple minutes before. He returned to the nether regions of hell or <laughs> yeah. something. Wherever he, he went down from. the hall. We never saw him again. And, you know, when he was walking away, he was just walking normal. Like, he wasn't shuffling. Yeah. So it wasn't him coming back. And we obviously would have seen him. Um um, and another thing, like we recorded, this is a video. So yes. we're, we pulled the audio from the video clip and we're just looking down a completely empty black hall. You can hear those footsteps shuffling towards us. Mm-hmm. Like there should have been someone there. And when you watch the video and we'll post it at some point, when you watch it, it's very clear that there should be something there. And, and you just, can tell I'm not moving. Yeah, I'm recording we didn't hear anything. And- Emily was standing next to me. Of course, she's not in the video shot, but like like we had said earlier, her bag jingles. So I'm it's, loud. It's not her. No. <laughs> I guarantee if I had heard that shuffling in person, I would have ran away. Yeah, that's another thing. Yeah. We did not I'd hear that. I'd be gone. We were just, yeah, I thought we might get a voice or something. Like we were just, you know, asking questions and being quiet. Right. And Yeah, we thought that that interaction like failed for the most part. Exactly. Um, like that was that's, that's so loud. It's like, it actually baffles me that we didn't hear that. Right. And like two other like observations we had with that sound in particular is one, I, we both feel like it kind of sounds like slippers, like, you know, like you might wear if you're in a hospital room or something. Mm -hmm. And two, we'd heard comments on the tour that patients of Waverly who had the surgery done where they'd have some of their uh, rib cage removed would kind of walk with like a hunch permanently and I don't know I can only imagine if you're walking with such a severe hunch you would not be picking up your feet Mm -hmm. like most people would with a normal healthy gait so I imagine there might be a shuffling sound exactly so So, yeah it could be that type of patient or even just an an elderly patient when it was a nursing home too they don't pick up their feet often so it was definitely it was not a live person not human foot says no. kayla would say <laughs> i was trying to word it differently <laughs> no that's your thing now human footsteps yeah so there's um there's more though to this audio so we're gonna play back some of it we'll just play it for now we'll talk about it we'll talk about it we caught two instances of somebody saying something though so uh, yeah we'll yeah play those for you now so enjoy being creeped out like we are we heard you just kicked a ball. Do you want to kick these little balls that light up that we brought? See how far they can go down the hallway? But they can go pretty far. We heard two separate yeses in that audio. Mm-hmm. We We only replayed the first one just because that one's a lot easier that was the first one we act- we heard we didn't hear the second one till today yeah um and yeah we tried to isolate it and it, it was harder to pull out so we just decided yeah we'll just you can go back and listen to the full clip if you want to hear it again but um yeah i mean those are intelligent responses i'm like saying do you want to kick this ball yes yes <laughs> I'm pretty sure when we first found the EVP when we were first recording it, I I pulled the section that we were originally talking about and I titled it Voldemort wants to kick the ball. <laughs> but yeah, I mean that's that's pretty much all we have to say on that one. We didn't hear those two sounds initially, definitely not in person, nope. definitely not listening back to the EVPs at first. So it definitely sounds like the two yeses, they're after I ask questions, they sound like the same voice, and it also sounds like that same hello from outside the morgue that we got earlier. Yeah. Um, I guess also to note, the voices have kind of a distorted sound to them, which mm-hmm. also, it, it, I don't think it was a human voice, as I would say. A former human? <laughs> a former human. Yeah, it just kind of has that. I don't know, distorted sound. So. Yeah, it almost sounded like it was being played in reverse to me. Mm. But, yeah, I mean, I don't know, it was just weird sounding. Um, but yeah, that's what that is. We, that's not all that we got. That's and not that's, it. So this is all happening in the same, like, five minutes mm-hmm. 
session on this floor. And so we're asked, so then the yes has happened, then the shuffling, then Emily gets out a another ball. Well, the cat ball goes off first. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Um, so this all, I think the yeses happen and then the cat ball goes off, which is the first thing we thought actually happened. That, cause obviously we saw that in person. <laughs> yeah. That was the only part of the interaction that we actually experienced was the cat balls going off. Mm-hmm. And that happened like three paranormal activities <laughs> <laughs> after I can't speak. Um, yeah. So this, the, the next thing we have is post cat ball. Yes, what happens after we're getting yeah. the balls going off. And, and Emily had put all, out a waffle, white waffle ball as well. So, wiffle ball. Waffle ball. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, why does that not sound right? Because it's not right, Kayla. I was looking oh at you like, God. waffle? I was waffle. thinking, <laughs> oh my God. no, I want a waffle. <laughs> I don't I want was, a waffle. Then I was thinking, like, waffle fabric shirt. And I was like, surely she knows what she's talking uh-huh. about. No, she doesn't. <laughs> Well, I don't think this next one needs a lot of explanation. You guys will hear. Yeah, can you roll that back to us? My name's Emily. My name's Kayla. My name's Emily. My name's Kayla. So, so that was Tim. Tim, which is interesting because on that floor is, quote, to me. Mm-hmm. So, uh, to me did not sound like a little boy. No. See, and again, like, I still have that concern, like, was somebody just messing with us? But we heard, once we play the full recording, at some point you'll hear that we, there is another voice that we capture. That's a man's voice, but it sounds distinctly different. It has that echo. You can tell it's in the stairway. Mm-hmm. Stairwell. This one, it's got that kind of electronic-y sound. I'm Tim. <laughs> I'm Tim. And just the timing of it, like, It was unless... right after you, it's, I mean, you say, I'm Emily. I'm Tim. Yeah. That's... And then unless somebody had literally been hiding... I I guess this this group just wasn't like that. Yeah, like, we can't rule it out 100%, but I just feel like we we heard nothing. We heard nothing in person, so it would have had to have been something we could have heard in person. These we didn't hear at the time. We did not hear. We did not hear anybody say, I'm Tim, because you, Kayla, immediately after said, what's your name? Yeah, and then the ball goes off, because he's probably like, I just told you my name. (laughs) <laughs> ask me these stupid redundant questions <laughs> yeah so we're i think tim was hanging out with us the whole time yeah i think so i don't know <laughs> but yeah that was all the that's the big evidence we got yeah um, which is plenty i mean yeah for me it's all extremely compelling <sighs> so there's that that's there's waverly hill sanitarium sanitarium <laughs> that was um I still feel skeptical overall, but I think that was one of the most compelling investigations we've had and one of the most compelling, like, interactions I've ever had into anything paranormal, Mm -hmm. where it wasn't just some quick thing that happened that we could maybe explain away. Yeah, and it it was a good mix of a couple things we witnessed and a um, few things we didn't even know were happening at the time so yeah um so, would love to hear what you guys think yeah if you could comment love if you could comment on us like on spotify and itunes but also if you want to swing to our instagram and check out those videos please comment there mm-hmm. um at remnants pod yes let us know what you think um if you've been to waverly Send us a message and you let know, us know what you what happened yeah. to you, your experiences there. Yeah, we'd love to hear it. And really, our whole ex- just the whole experience for the Waverly, it's it's really it's nice. It's well done. Um, it is extremely fun. It is. Um, Even if you just are not into ghosts and you just want to explore like an abandoned building, I mean, it's it's cool. That element of it was one of my favorite parts. Like even without thinking we'd gotten a lot of activity, like just being able to explore. Like I think I said multiple times that I felt like I was in a video game. You did. It was uh-huh. so much fun. Yeah. I was scared out of my mind, but it was fun, <laughs> and I want to go back so bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've gonna... we've been bit. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. We already dropped more money on an investigation because we're like, we need more. We need more. I'm addicted. So, 
this this is going to be our last episode for a little bit, isn't it? Yes, it's our, if you want to call it our season one finale. Mm-hmm. We're, um, I think we it, I think it's good to end this season on a high note because we have a lot of plans and we're by no means going to stop working because we have a lot. Yes, we just need out. to give ourselves some time to catch up. So that we can do some investigations, yeah. and there's some heavy research episodes we're really excited about we want to do, but we just need to give ourselves the time to do it. So, so yes, we're <laughs> going to take a little hiatus if, until season two starts. Hopefully just... Not too long. Not too long. Because we have a lot going on, and with it moving into summer, we're able to investigate more easily again mm-hmm. now that we're out of winter. So we definitely want to... We'll still be doing some of our kind of little, let's just call them mini episodes, but investigating is what we really like doing yes <laughs> oh my god we've got what is it like four ideas oh yeah that we'll hopefully get to this summer so. oh yeah like legit investigations yeah yeah so yeah that's 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 it for now yeah so please like if you've enjoyed our first 13 episodes oh, we ended on 13 i know it's kind of perfect isn't it? um yeah please spread the word um we really you know, need your help in getting the word out and leaving us reviews would be so awesome. We've got a lot of fun new things planned for season two, including building up our YouTube page. Yes. Yes. So our goal is to get our Waverly episode edited because there's a lot more content too of us just exploring the place that we obviously can't really share in the medium of a podcast. So that'll be really exciting to get out. And we just got a lot of fun stuff planned for season two. So yeah. And so we did, we'll just kind of end on this note, we did post a poll, I guess, on our Instagram stories at Remnants Pod, kind of asking people if they've ever seen a ghost. And then afterwards, we prompted um, anybody who has to share us their story, and we did get one, and we said we'd read it on the podcast, so here it is. So this is from Kelsey. And she went to college in Atchison, and she said she lived in the oldest dorm on campus. Each year, they did, quote, room blessings with holy water, but she opted out. She was alone in her room doing homework with the door closed and had been in there for a while. She got up from her desk to leave, and the door was locked and wouldn't budge. She had to pull down on the handle hard a couple of times in order to get it to unlock and open the door. It was the same night as the dorm's room blessing that she opted out of. It's pretty spooky. And we know Atchison is hella haunted. So thank you for sharing that story, Kelsey. Yeah, thank you so much. And if anybody doesn't know what we're talking about when we talk about Atchison being haunted, then we will refer you to our first episode. Mm Mm-hmm. Please go listen to that. The audio is a little bit rougher. You can definitely tell we've improved our audio. <laughs> yeah, but you should totally listen to it. Yeah. And there is actually one more piece of evidence we forgot about. <gasps> what? We have a picture. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm so focused on talking about the voices I and know. footsteps. I did forget about, the- oh my God, this is like legit too. We're definitely posting this when we announce this episode, so hopefully you will have seen it. But... When we first parked at Waverly, um, I did the whole look up, take a picture of the building because it's freaky as hell. Mm -hmm. And I sent it to a group chat I have. And I instantly got a screenshot of the picture back that somebody had circled and literally said, look at this creepy beach. (laughs) And I was like, it's just a fucking tear in the window. It's nothing at the time. And then we looked back at it like the day after and zoomed in. At this, like, distortion in the window that I thought was a tear in the screen. Mm-mm. But this tear in the screen happens to have uh, what looks like parting of hair, two eyes, a nose, a mouth, a chin, a neck, and a chest. And two arms. The arms are so dumb looking that I'm not <laughs> accepting them. It's like, woo! Yeah, it's just like, welcome to my sanatorium! Woo! <laughs> The rest of it's creepy as hell, but then I mean, you the see the arms and it's just like... <laughs> it's like that they're in a V. Like, yeah. Uh, but... Or is it just like her legs? Just like... <laughs> <laughs> but the face, I mean... The face. The face belongs in Conjuring. I mean, 
I know there there could be what do you call that where you're like you matrixing? Yeah, but this is too cool. I mean, it's a face. Everybody other than us instantly was like, "There's a woman in the window," mm-hmm. and I we're I've, the ones being more skeptical about it yeah, than everyone else. Like I've since people have pointed out, I've sent it to people. I'm like, not even zooming in. I'm just like, do you see anything in this picture that's weird? And they always they're like, find yeah, it. the second window, and I'm like, okay. And the longer I look at it, the more I'm like, that's a full-ass fucking face. Mm-hmm. So, um... So, it was welcoming us. Yeah. I'm really glad I didn't believe at the time. Yeah, because I think I would have been more scared. <laughs> I think I was in denial, because like, oh, I have to do this. There is not a lady in the window. That, I'm pushing that away. The first freaking picture I take of this place. It literally was. Also, this place is notoriously hard to find. We... Oh, my so- God. But we should post that video too of me driving. Be like, <laughs> is this right? I think it's right. The, but the direction stopped. I don't know. And Kayla just told me like we found this padlock gate, and she was just like, just go up there. And I'm like, okay. And we just go and we stop. I'm like, well, that's a gate and it's, it's a, locked. It's a lock gate. I more wanted to go up to it because there was like a sign, so I wanted to read what the sign said. And then I got scared because I think there was another person going to this investigation that pulled us up behind us. I mean, it is, we're driving at like 11.45 at night. I mean, it is. In a kind of a not great area Mm -hmm. that I had no idea where we were. And I was just like, oh my God, did somebody just take the opportunity to just block us in this dead end? I was like, shit. (laughs) Well, you're fine. I think they were just also there. They were. They were. And were also equally lost. Yeah. And then we ended up finding this trail that went alongside a golf course. It was a whole thing. It was just, you could tell that we were terrified. Yeah. I think we were just trying to keep ourselves like happy and distracted. We're having a good time. (laughs) But we did have a good time. We did have a very good time. I hope you enjoyed our episode. And yeah, we'll, we'll be back better than ever better and hopefully with even more amazing evidence yeah yeah because we are official i'm calling us official ghost hunters now we're not amateur anymore (laughs) sure sure (laughs) whatever you say kayla okay (laughs) all righty we'll see you for season two woohoo bye bye Mm-hmm. <laughs>